My name is David Salek. I'm a person that works in the media business like you. Before I joined the Isilon company in 2010, um, in early 2010, I worked for a company like this here. So I'm a former Avid ACSR, uh, an XSAN certified technician, version one and two. I've installed over 25 XSANs, primarily US. And uh, Stornext certified, I've migrated five XSANs to Stornext because they needed the tape manager, which XSAN doesn't support. So I had to migrate those. Um, also worked with Avid, Storage, Landshare, Unity 3, Unity 4, Unity 5, and ISIS. Um, I've worked with EditShare, Facilis TerraBlock, um, lots of LaCie disk, lots of GTEC disk, um, MetaSAN, MetaLAN, um, CommandSoft FiberJet, used to be Transoft back when Avid owned that. Um, I've worked with a lot of storage management, primarily for editorial. Final Cut Pro, Media Composer, Symphony, DS, um, uh, Autodesk, Smoke, Flame. Uh, if you go back far enough, there's a product called a Discrete Edit. I don't know if anybody even remembers that. So um, that was the first editor I learned to use was Discrete Edit before Final Cut Pro. Um, well before its time. <laughs> it was a very advanced editor for way back then. Um, I've worked with a lot of storage technology over 10 years for a company like this. And in the time I worked with that storage, um, a lot of those products are good. Much like the LSC and the GTEC and the USB drives, Firewire drives. Uh, I worked back in SCSI back when RAID 5 was very expensive for two terabytes. Um, two terabytes would cost you about $10,000 for Avid storage back in 2002 about that much, it was very expensive. And it was about this high as a stack for two terabytes of storage. <laughs> it was very tall um, and very expensive in all RAID zero <laughs> because that's what you could do back then with Avid um, or with Discrete. So uh, it's all changed and now the story of all this very cheap storage, you can buy a three terabyte hard drive for less than a dollar a gigabyte. US, but dollar based. So I think that translates into seven or eight kroner around now here, um, or whatever the, that whatever that financial number is I got. Um, storage is cheap when you buy it just as a single disk. Very inexpensive. The story I want to tell you about is for about the 10 years I worked, this was the world as it looked, and it works. I would have ingest servers that would either be attached to an ARI or a Spirit or some other film scanner, or I would have tape decks, beta SP, beta digibeta, HD cam, um, DV25, DV50, HDV, all of these, or live, like these. And they would be captured to some local storage or copied into some organization like this, the slide that we saw previously, working local storage, local storage, local storage, local storage, who, everybody's copying their files. So this came along as shared access, whether it was XSAN, which Apple really changed the game of working with local storage for multiple people and brought all this together. And that's when I started working with XSAN was 2004, right about that time. And you would get these users working here. And if you wanted to grow the XN, you usually ended up with a separate volume for the high bandwidth clients. So then to grow your SAN, you usually made a separate one. Or then you had a NAS that might be here. Or you had lots of FireWire drives. And those, I've seen customers, they have 200 or more of these, sometimes 300 drives, all different, whoever was the cheapest at the time. And they're on the shelves and they're on the shelves. Um, and they want to use the capacity, so they'll buy a two drive in a chassis and make it RAID zero. If one of those drives stops working, that was the whole project and it's gone. So I've watched customers lose data over five or six years. A drive would occasionally not start up or somebody would drop it and, oh well, the, you lost data right there. Um, and back then, backup was tape. 
have an archive server, put it into some deep archive, or it was videotape. Autodesk would archive a flame project onto Digibeta, and that was your storage. Or a finished project was archived on videotape. The problem with this architecture, it was, was good, heavily in the US and Canada, and I've learned traveling throughout Australia and Europe heavily here. The problem is, um, while this has been common to w share data, there's file movement between SAN and NAS. These create bottlenecks. So where is the current version of the file? And SANs are difficult to manage and scale. That's what I learned, is when I would install a SAN, it would work. Store Next or SGI, CXFS for discrete systems, or uh, uh, the XSAN for Final Cut workflows, or the, uh, the MediaNet Avid system. The problem was to grow it was not easy. It would look easy to grow the file system, but in fact, it would become unstable. The file system would go offline, and it would affect all of the users at the same time. And I would get the phone calls, the SAN is down, I have 10 users, cannot work at the same time. So growing these needs to be reliable, and I found that SANs are difficult to grow. They work. Growing them is a different situation. Drives get bigger, so I put three terabyte drives in here, and these are all 250 gigabyte drives in here because this is four years old. And this does not match this, so I can't attach them. I have to make a new volume. And then I have to make a new volume. And then I have to make a new volume as I get newer drives because I can't mix them. When I try to mix them, the sand becomes unstable and goes offline. So what I present to you is the idea of architecture, which is the sands we grew up with, versus choreography, working as a team when players are different sizes. On a team, if you think football, you've got fast players, you've got big players. They're different sizes, but they work as a team. Traditional post-production, broadcast architectures, you have storage for different workflows, storage for ingest, live ingest and broadcast. You have storage for post-production, maybe low resolution, working in DV100 or ProRes or DNX. And then you have finishing, working in uncompressed or 2K. And to try to grow one of these is difficult. The drives are bigger. The technology is different. There was XServe RAID for Apple. Then there was Promise. Now there's Active Storage and there's Infotrend. And they're all different because one manufacturer stopped making that. Now there's a new manufacturer. And they stopped making that, and there's a new one. The drives are bigger. To make them all work, not so good. So you make a volume, and a volume, and a volume, and you keep adding more volumes. This is architecture. Much like a city, you make a different building. The building looks different. It's a different layout. Your data lives in here, and now it's more complicated for you to run your business. So when I looked at Isilon, what I realized was growing an organization needs to be a team, despite the fact that there are different players. So when you coordinate their movement, you're more efficient with the data in your business. That coordination can happen from an architecture that uses different drives and different components, but makes it all one, like this. So we take that and we replace it with something simpler. Several things. Why? We call this scale out because we're scaling up performance. I have these users, their performance requirement, higher bandwidth performance requirement to organize them to reduce the number of file systems and to be able to have a single file system to scale. Oops. Ah. <laughs> the goal 
is to reduce the number of storage systems you have. So if this is fast, but is also more expensive, and I need more capacity, I shouldn't have to pay for the expensive disk that someone sells you to grow this. If all I need is more capacity, I should be able to add lower cost per terabyte capacity, but do it in a single file system. That's what we can do. One file system. Different performance characteristics. So like different team members on one team as opposed to different file systems spread out today. So we call this the tipping point of scale. So multiple volumes, single volume, simple. Our business in media is to produce something creative. People watch it, people love it, people will pay to advertise on it, it will make us revenue, we can go home, we can take care of our families, we can do the things we love and do the jobs we love. We don't get paid to manage storage. We get paid to create images and audio and beautiful content. So why should you have a complex job managing storage, which is what, when you grow up from FireWire USB drives to SANS to multiple SANS and NAS, that's work. It should be simple. So growing a file system should be that simple. Traditional NAS has volume limits, much like SANS. There's these underneath layers that could be as small as two terabytes, up to 64 terabytes. And then I have to make multiples of them to grow past 64 terabytes. We can grow in less than one minute. Push a button right on the display here. Push, join, yes, done. Customers literally do this today and they do it at lots of media companies. It takes longer to rack the node than it does to join it to one file system. And the challenge we have when growing a file system, I have many customers that start here, 10 terabytes is fine. Small, efficient, good. We can do this up to 15,000 terabytes in one file system. There are no sections. I don't have many customers that have one this big, but um, I do have two in media that are 10,000 terabytes in one file system. So very big ones. Um, so what happens when you grow a file system, a SAN, an XSAN, a Storenext, a Unity, an ISIS, a TerraBlock, an Edit Share? When they start to fill, you have to create a new volume when it's full. What we do, you add the node, and we balance out the data so it's even across all. We do that for you. So when you add the node, it takes one minute. After you add the node, the capacity is evenly distributed across all automatically. No manual intervention, no reconfiguration, no changes for clients mounting the file system. It just grows bigger. So you can create beautiful video and images and audio. We'll do the work for you that's unfit for humans. That's what this technology does. It simplifies what was complex to grow your business and grow the storage with it. When you add more users and you take in more data, this inevitably makes your life easier. So there are no hotspots. There is no data concentrated here that I must manually copy to here. We do all of that work for you. Being able to organize your business with our product is easy. We can have 
Macs and Windows systems running XP or Vista or 7 or even 8 with Unix, Linux, Red Hat, what have you, even virtualization platforms, HP, UCS, all of them connecting to one file system, one mount point, whether connecting Macs over NFS and Windows over SMB 1 or 2, these Unix systems over NFS, any of these systems over HTTP or FTP, it could be a transfer platform, all in one file system for different client performance needs. These Macs are video, they're usually quite fast. Windows systems may be administrative or an asset management system. So making this easy, no drivers. So in the world I lived in with drivers, um, Apple XAN to support a store next version four file system needs Mountain Lion client. Mountain Lion client will break a few applications in video and media right now because they're not up to date. So I know customers that are still on old XSAN because they cannot upgrade their operating systems because the XSAN client is limited to store next version three and XSAN version two client cannot upgrade to sub connect to a store next version four because if they upgrade their Macs to Mountain Lion, that means that the Adobe applications aren't compliant and they would have to upgrade the Adobe application suite and they would have to upgrade the Avid application as well. Money, 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 money. Complexity, complexity, complexity. It's very difficult to upgrade shared storage. For us, it's easy. You saw the buttons. You add a node, push the button, it grows. I can have a Windows XP system from 2000 connecting to the same storage system as a Mac with Mountain Lion. Two clients, eight years difference in age. No problem. I don't care. Easy. No drivers. When you don't have drivers to connect, it's easy to connect everybody. To connect this laptop over Ethernet right here. And over NFS on this laptop, I could do 95, 97 megabytes per second over gigabit Ethernet over NFS. That's faster than FireWire 800, as nearly as fast as USB 3.0. No driver, just plug, mount, edit. Adobe, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro 7, and yes, even Avid. So all of those, easy. Premiere Pro Windows, connect. Autodesk, smoke on Mac, connect, edit. If I do a 10 gigabit adapter, Addo Technology makes a Thunderbolt 10 gigabit adapter for 10 base T or 10 gigabit Ethernet optical. Then I could do several hundred megabytes per second on this laptop over Thunderbolt to Ethernet. No driver. Plug, go. The key though is as you build a large file system, you may not need to buy the same expensive disk. So having a data set that's created on this tier of storage, but m moving the data down to lower cost per terabyte disk, people bought FireWire disks because they were cheap, they were inexpensive, but the data may not be protected well. We have very good protection. We are better than RAID 6 and we are faster than RAID 6 as well. What would be ideal is for the data to move down when it's idle. And we can do that for you. We automatically migrate the data inside our storage without user migrations from one file system to another file system across your network, creating bandwidth load and slowing down users. We do file movement within our file system using InfiniBand. InfiniBand is an extremely low latency network and we use it to be able to move the data or even bring the data back up to be able to migrate it to a, a location where it needs to go next. Oops. Let's see right there, go back. 
So if I move the data down, ah, I can move the data back up as well. The animation's not working. Um, when I move the data back up, I do that over here, not on the network. So I keep that bandwidth open for you to edit, transcode, ingest, play out. That's all open. So to grow a file system, you don't have to buy the expensive disk over and over and over just to get more capacity. You can buy lower cost per terabyte disk because data may become at rest. Job not approved. Hold. Okay, it's three terabytes sitting there on expensive disk. Why? It's not approved. Okay. Move it down here. Wait until the phone call. Okay, it's approved. Play out to whatever you're going to deliver, format it. Move it back. After one week, two weeks, a month, we migrate for you so you don't have to. Another thing we do, we make a point to work with the technology you use. So our customers worldwide rely on us to be a good partner with the technologies that you may use in your business. We work with um, ITV in UK to certify EVS for ingest so they can ingest direct to Isilon from live EVS servers. We work with Telestream to be able to transcode with Vantage, all kinds of media direct on Isilon. We work with Elemental Technologies to encode for HTTP live streaming to deliver to iPad, iPhone, Android. This uses GPU from NVIDIA. They make their own motherboard with NVIDIA embedded on it. So this will do multiple times faster than real time to deliver to alternate delivery platforms for live events as well as edited material. They're a partner with Isilon. They are scale just like us. You need more encoding? Add another elemental server. Add another Isilon node. Parallel. They work together. We work with Adobe for the next Premiere Pro, currently version 5.5 and 6, supported for direct on Isilon. We've been supporting Final Cut 7 for four years now. We have over 50 customers worldwide that edit direct on Isilon. The Adobe example, um, we have Associated Press in London and New York. They have 50 users of Premiere Pro CS6 on Mac, editing direct on Isilon at the same time. 50. So for their business, it's about efficiency, keeping everything organized in one place to manage it easily. And with Flavor Assist, you'll hear later, it allows us to support Avid. So in larger broadcast workflows, I work with VizRT up in Switzerland and Norway for asset management. We work with Dalit out of Israel for their production and playout systems for broadcast. We work with Sony. We did a project with Sony for the United Nations for all of their ingest video for all of their different rooms. And there's many rooms at the United Nations. So we did a project with them. We're very good partners with Harrison from Porch Digital and Miranda. So Miranda is, bought a company called Omnibus ITX for ingest. Is similar design like us. Commodity hardware, uses AJA just like we have here, and be able to do live ingest or live playout affordably. From Porch Digital for archive to tape using LTO. Um, they're very good at understanding the broadcast space in large archives. So our customers worldwide depend on us to talk to these companies because if we don't, then we can't be sure that our workflow is the right solution storage for you. So we consider these partnerships important. A concept I wanted to bring to your attention is how one file system can support multiple different workflows at the same time. This is an example architecture. It's not a requirement, it's an idea. Actually, this is in the field. This is a TV station in the United States. Um, with one file system, one mount point, we can have ingest servers, ingesting video, 
Could be DV100, could be XD Cam 422 for broadcast workflows. Could be uncompressed, but this is broadcast, so XD Cam. Ingesting to certain nodes so that only those nodes service ingest. Editors down here using Adobe or Final Cut Pro or even Avid may be editing and rendering their video. I'll connect them to their own nodes. Not the same nodes as ingest. If I did that, I could cause a drop frame on ingest. That's not good. But I can segment them and play out where I can play video straight to air. I can organize these nodes to only service play out client software and servers. But it's one file system. Everybody sees the same namespace. But I provision workflow for their characteristics. This is always writing. This is always reading. This is a mix of reading and writing. I have asset management that's creating proxies. I have PCs that are lightweight editors. They're using web browsers to see proxy clips and do cuts only edits or selects. These editors may be editing off of a live ingest. So this is video and editor sees the, the video coming in and can edit right on it before it's done. So edit while ingest. They can do all of this at the same time and IT can access everything to manage. So in this design, the goal here is centralizing all of this workflow on one file system, one mount point, which normally is a big risk in broadcast. I have ingest with its storage. I have edit with its storage. I have playout with playout servers have storage. It's traditional for broadcast. It's been like this for almost 20 years. Storage from ingest server company, EVS. Storage from edit company, Xan or Avid. Storage from playout server, Omnion, Spectrum, or Grass Valley. And asset management, storage for them too. That's lots of storage to manage. It's 2012. Technology should be good enough to centralize it on one platform or fewer platforms so that your job is easier because that's what your competition is doing today. Whether you know it or not, there are companies that are working on doing this today in media. And for all of us, it's important to recognize that technology is maturing, is getting more stable. What took previously a computer, now is that iPad in the back. Can do nearly everything this does, but do it with much less. Technology has advanced. It's simpler and easier to do this. We have designed a platform the same way. One thing that's important when you centralize is how do you measure? How do you look at how users use technology? What we do is we create a tool. We call it Insight IQ. It's up there. It lets you see how all the users in one dashboard are using the storage technology in one place. Um, yesterday I was with ITV in the morning and they showed me their data center and they showed me a rack of that storage and a rack of three different storage and a rack of this next sand and this infotrend and that and that. You ask them how much storage do they buy? How much storage do they have? They don't know. They have no idea because Every business unit is buying on their own, buying for that need. There's no organization between different parts of the business to be smarter about how they buy technology. They want to change that, and they've started buying Isilon, so they don't buy that and that and that and that, but instead buy one that supports all of those in one platform. And they know how the data lives on that platform, how much bandwidth is used, how much capacity is used, SMB, NFS protocols, and being able to manage and see your technology makes you feel better about your investment. So the owners, the presidents, the leaders of these businesses we work for, they like it when they can see what they've bought and how we're using it to make media today. 
And we have the tools that let you see this. See the overall capacity, see the unused capacity. With our platform, you don't have to buy more than you need today. You can buy it as you need it. And when you get another project that has budget that will pay for more storage, then you can buy the storage. You don't have to buy this much if you need only this much, but maybe I might get this project, I better buy all this. Why? Buy what you need. Grow as you can afford to pay for it. That's what Isilon does. It's a lot better with budget and management that way. The next thing is our platform nodes. We have a new one that we launched in May. We call it X400. It allows us to go up to 15 petabytes in one single file system, over 100 gigabytes per second of throughput across the whole file system, so it's extremely fast. We have a lot of cache, up to 27 terabytes of memory. Data from memory is a lot faster than data from spinning disk, and we can do a lot of cache for very high throughput workflows, especially cached workflows that are, for example, streaming media, live media encoding for live sports events. Cache is very important. So it's a very flexible platform. It's good for mixed workflows. So I have customers that have home directories and Avid editing in one platform. Because if they bought an ISIS, they could do the Avid editing, but they can't service the home directories for that part of the business. They need a separate storage for that. I have customers that do both in one Isilon. So instead of buying two technologies, they bought one, they saved money, and they managed two workflows at once. Our platform nodes previously was not quite 400 megabytes per second. With our previous platform, we can now do 740 megabytes per second on one node. So in our cluster technology, we always have a thing called a cluster, which is multiple nodes. We have three minimum. Three of those at 740 per node is 2.2 gigabytes per second in one single platform, one namespace, very fast. And our idea here is that we are linear scale. As you add another node, you get capacity and performance at the same time. And we do it with three platforms. We have our S series. We have visual effects customers that use this. So small, medium, and even large visual effects, compositing, 3D rendering, um, movie companies, or visual effects for movies, they'll use this because it's very good for IOPS workflows and random access, which is primarily Nuke, Maya, uh, those types of applications, very good for this platform. Our X-Series is our mid-range product, is good for streaming media, is good for uncompressed in 2K, and also good for compressed, XD Cam, DV100, AVCI, um, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, as well as ProRes, DNX HD, is flexible in either the small, smaller platform or this very larger X400 platform. Our NL is near line. So this is about, it's purpose built for lower cost per terabyte. So the point here is that you can mix these together in one namespace. So if you have a basic workflow today with X200 and you need more density and you will look for an alternative to LTO tape. I need data on disk is faster to work with than data on tape and my tape restoration process is maybe not working well. I talk with customers that use LTO today. It's good technology and I, I, I support it. From Porsche Digital, move to tape. That's good. Uh, SGL works very well is also for that. Um, there are some technologies using LTFS, the LT, uh, linear tape file system. We can interface to that to migrate to tape, but some customers prefer a disk archive or disk near line because more servers, more clients can access storage when the files are on disk for near line versus accessing a LTO drive that may take longer to get the files. So growing this 
with this in one file system is easy. Oh, this is the one that builds funny. So the benefits for us are managing your cost better so you buy what you need when you need it, improving your productivity by being able to support different file system requirements. The slide I showed you for edit and ingest and play and near line for archive and accelerating your workflow, being more productive because now you're not managing storage, you're managing your creative business and the storage grows with it easy. So this is the Isilon workflow and that's my presentation for here. Thanks a lot, David. Mm -hmm. Thank you.